to worship. Mm-hmm. And it is a beautiful day, and it is lovely and warm in here. Mm-hmm. And we welcome our friends who will be worshipping at home later. And we also welcome our younger church as well. So we try to stand up and give them all a wave, and the children at the back. Turn round to give everybody a wave, to make sure you make, you're all here. Wonderful. Uh, this morning we are blessed to have Jill and Steve lead us in all age worship. Thank you both for all you have prepared. We await your message. Now the notices are as printed, so please keep them in your prayers through the week. We've just got one little thing to say about the notices. As you can see, Nancy Snell is here with us. It's Nancy's sister who's in hospital with two fractures, not Nancy. (laughs) Because Nancy is here. (laughs) So we do keep Maureen in our prayers because she is in a lot of pain. Thank you. Now selection boxes. Well, I personally got to say a huge, huge thank you to you all. We have at the moment, this very moment, 164 selection boxes. So I thank you all. Um, not in this church, I've done it in Langstone, we've done it in Wives, we've done it in Monday Club. So you just, it's a huge, we were only expecting about 60 or 70, so I think Raven House will be overwhelmed. So thank you all very, very much. Next Sunday is the first Sunday in Advent. That's a bit scary, isn't it? And we'll be led by our own Rev Les. So just shall we have a few moments of prayer? Shall we pray? Loving and gracious God, you are ever present with us. Always walking beside us, no matter what we face. You are the God of the past, the present and the future. Always unchanging in a world that is constantly changing. Help us to continue to put our trust in you, to step out with confidence and follow you wherever you may lead us. May we always remember that no matter who we are, you will always welcome us with open arms. Enable us to share your love, forgiveness, grace and acceptance with others that they too may come to know and grow closer to you. Amen. So thank, thank you, Steve and Jill. Well, thank you, Christine, for that uh, very warm welcome. It's lovely to see everybody here today. And before I get into my script, I'd just like to say how lovely it is to come into church on a Sunday morning and see the beautiful flowers in front of us. And a very big thank you to those who take the time to buy the flowers, to arrange the flowers, and to make this a, a real place that we can delight in. So welcome to our All Age Worship in November. Can't believe it's November already, I'm still in June. Uh, I, only, I only stopped wearing shorts uh, on Saturday. So, um, and I'm, I'm grateful to Jill for asking me to uh, take part in the service. Um, and it's, it's been really good working with her in, in preparing it. Now, All Age Worship suggests something. It's a service for people of all ages. You know, the clue is in the title. And that means it's for five-year-olds, 15-year-olds, 25-year-olds, 40-year-olds like me, (laughs) and for those of us who are just a little bit more mature. So it is all-age worship. So there's going to be something here today for everyone. And after all, we are all God's children. So let's come to worship this morning with that approach, ready to learn, ready to take part, ready to listen, but most importantly, ready to worship. Now, our service today includes a story about a picnic. Uh, Is there anybody in here that likes picnics? Right? I think most of us like picnics. Now, do you like the sort of picnic where there's not much food? 
Does anybody like a picnic where there's only three sausage rolls and there are ten people there? Well, I always put my running shoes on in those picnics so I can make sure I get my sausage roll. Does anybody like a picnic with a barbecue? Yeah. Mike Lavis, do you like a picnic with a barbecue? Mike absolutely loves it. And Mike always cooks on a gas barbecue. Is that right, Mike? No, he always cooks. He, he gets two pieces of wood and rubs them together and makes a spark. We, we usually start lighting the uh, barbecue about three o'clock and we normally eat about nine. So um, it, it's very efficient. But we all like a picnic. Do we like a picnic when it's raining? No, I'm not very keen on a picnic when it's raining. Um, even under a big umbrella. I don't like picnics when it's raining. I don't like picnics in the cold. What do you need? What sort of weather do you need for a picnic? Sunny weather. Nice weather. Now there is one four-letter word that describes the sort of day we like to have for a picnic. Can anybody think of what that four-letter word is? Four-finger, sorry. <laughs> what four-letter... Sorry, I've always been in your root. Um, warm, it's, it's a good word, but it's not the right word. It begins with the letter F. Fine. We all like a fine day for a picnic. So it's no coincidence that our first song that we're going to sing together is Thank you, Lord, for this fine day. And you know something? I did a little bit of research into this song, and I was amazed to find that it, despite it's very popular, how, when do you think it was written? Ten years ago? Fifty years ago. Thank you, Cliff. Our hymnographer at the back got it right. It was actually first published in 1971. 50 years ago, and it's been a popular song ever, ever since. So, can we then sing heartily this wonderful song which saying to God, Thank you, Lord, for this fine day? And Julie's going to lead us. Stand if you're able, sit if you want to, however you feel best, please do it. Thanks, Jill.
You don't need to agree with that sentiment. So now we're on, that's better. I don't have to speak quite as loudly. So, lovely. What a really, really nice intro to our worship today. So we've just sung a very simple but a very meaningful song to say thank you to God. And in our prayer meetings on a Monday, we always start with prayers which say thank you to God because we think we've got so much to thank God for. And that's the right place to begin, saying thank you to God. But we also need to tell God how we feel about him and to say how we're going to worship him and that we're going to worship him with everything we've got all our energy and all our strength we're going to give him the best worship we can offer so we're going to see a video clip which you could join into it gives Jill a bit of uh, a breather. I wasn't very happy about that. I like people to give their full for the service. So Jill's going to have a, have a little nap for a few minutes. And we're going to see uh, the words and some actions come up on the screen. And it's 10,000 reasons. 10,000 reasons to worship God and to hold Him in the highest esteem that we can. So thank you, Simon for the video clip. Fortunately, we've got the screen up there, so 
uh, we can join in. So we're going to talk to God now. And when we talk to God, we call that prayer when we talk to God. It's just a conversation that we're having with God. And sometimes we'll tell him how great we think he is. Sometimes we want to say, oh, thank you ever so much for the sunshine today, God. It's beautiful out there. Sometimes we have to say we're sorry because we've done things we shouldn't have done and we're going to do that later on. But when we pray, we try to be quiet. But do you know what? God doesn't mind if we make a bit of noise because God just is so pleased to hear that we're praying to him and that we're talking to him. Because like Steve said, we're all his children. We're all his children and he really blesses everything we do for him. So we're going to pray now. And I want you just to remember that Jesus and God also hear the prayers of our hearts. We don't have to use words. And just maybe something might come into your heart or into your mind that you can share with God. And you can just do that between you and God. So we're going to come together now. We're going to talk to God as we pray. God, we praise you for what you have done. Thank you for making the world and making it good. There's just so much variety. There's colour, there's size, there's shape. Thank you for the seasons, the changes in the weather, the rain and the sunshine, the hot and the cold. Father, we praise you for loving us, for putting us in families and giving us friends. And a huge great big thank you, God, for being here right now with us. It's amazing because we didn't have to ask you to be here because you've promised us that where we meet together, you are here with us. And thank you for the people sitting with us right now. Thank you for our church family, for being here now and being with us always, wherever we are. Praise the Lord for his love endures forever. Amen. And we're all going to join in the Lord's Prayer. You know, God really loves groups of people praying together. And all over the world today, in almost or probably every country in the world, Christians have prayed the Lord's Prayer. And there's some Christians praying it right now. And we're going to join them as part of God's worldwide family. As we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our Bible reading, we've already had a bit of a clue as to what it might be about. It's going to be up on the screen for us today. So have a little look, have a little listen. Just see what this story says to you. After this, Jesus went across Lake Galilee, or Lake Tiberias, as it is also called. After this, Jesus went across Lake Galilee, or Lake Tiberias, as it is also called. A large crowd followed him because they had 
see his miracles of healing the sick. So, the feeding of the 5,000, we know what the story is now, don't we? And I picked up quite a few bits from that video when I watched it. Um, I won't go into all of them, but here we're witnessing God's big power with a small offering. It was only a little picnic, a lad's picnic. And I thought, do you know what we do, or what I do, 
I judge my problems in the light of my own resources. I don't think always about my problem and then what is God's resource? What can he do to help me solve my problem? Did you notice that the disciples said, how are we going to feed these people? We haven't got enough food. But I spotted that look on Jesus' face. He knew what he was going to do. The disciples thought about their small resource. But here we have the power of Jesus actually changing a very small resource into a great big feast using his big power. Andrew brought that lad to Jesus expecting something to happen. And that's another thing I wonder. Do we give our gifts to um, God expecting something to happen with them? Just a thought. And then I thought how wonderful it was and how well they showed here that food multiplying. Every basket that went out had more bread in it, more fish in it, until they had so much they couldn't eat anymore. And so what we give to God, he multiplies, he makes it more. But if we hold it back for ourselves, it stays to be the five loaves and the two fishes. I couldn't count the number of loaves it turned out to be. But that was something else I thought. If we give God what we have, he makes it more and more and more. As we keep giving, he keeps giving. So I spotted that too. And I spotted, you know, that that boy did something very special. He didn't need a miracle, he had his lunch. Whether anybody else had their lunch, we're not told. But not only did he have his lunch, he offered it. He wanted to take part. He didn't want to sit there and think, well, I'll eat it sort of secretly behind my hand because then nobody will notice. He actually gave it. He wanted to take part. And Jesus wants us to accept his invitation to take part. Jesus didn't need that lunch, you know. He could have fed those people anyway because he's got the power and the ability to do that. But he wants us to take part. He wants us to work in partnership with him. That's why he gives us gifts so that we can offer them back to him and work in partnership with him. And then we can be a part of that great big job that Jesus gave the disciples right at the end. He said, go and baptize everyone. Make disciples of everyone. And that's a huge task. But that's what God is calling every one of us to do. Because he gives us the gifts to use. And so the most amazing thing I think about that story, and perhaps when you go home you'd like to read it, it's in John chapter 6, verses 1 to 14. You may come up with other things, but what really amazes me in that story is God's huge power working with our small abilities, the small things we can do to make something amazing happen. Because our God isn't a little God. Our God is a great big God. And he holds us in his hands. So we're going to sing some more praise to God now because we're going to sing our God is a great big God. And I'm sure that everybody in the room either knows the actions that we usually do or can make up your own. You don't have to follow everybody else. You can make up your own actions and you can sing it if you just sing it with your heart because we believe that our God is a powerful and a great big God.
going to just we're going to just change the mood uh, with our next um, song. It's in our number because we're aware that God is a great big God, that He does amazing and powerful things, and that we can still see that in our world today. It didn't all just happen 2,000 years ago, but we can see that in our world today. And we are great believers and thinking as Christian people that we can play a part in some of the things that make God have a sad heart, that hurt him. When he sees people who are lonely, when he sees people that aren't getting their fair share, when he sees people who are struggling, who are in pain. Also when he sees people who are enjoying life and they're having fun and everything is fantastic for them. And ultimately he wants us, really wants us, to be his disciples. So we're going to sing, if you are using a book, and I'm not sure if anybody is using a book, but if you are using a book, it's Singing the Faith 251. Jesus Christ is waiting, waiting in the streets. Jesus says, 
that he is waiting, is angry, is healing, is dancing and is calling. There's one little word there that I think is very important and it's the is word because that means that Jesus is doing all these things now just as Jesus used to do in all the Bible stories that we've read about him. Now I want you to think about the video clip that you saw a few minutes ago about that fantastic big picnic. We didn't see Mike Lavis there with his barbecue because those poor 5,000 would have still been there the following morning. And so, but we did see some miraculous things happen. Now I want you to just close your eyes. We don't like doing that very much because we like to know what's happening around us. Close your eyes and think about that video clip about the feeding of the 5,000. Imagine if you'd been there, who would you have been? Who would you have been in that big picnic? And what might you have been thinking? Now, have you got that thought in your mind? Because I'm going to ask people to tell me what they were thinking and who might they have been. Now Pauline said to me before I left her with her crutches this morning and a piece of stale bread and some spam. Um, Pauline said to me, you better have a word before the service and plant a few people so that people will be answering. And I said, no. I said, you underestimate the brain power of the St. Julius congregation. I'll be able to ask anybody and I'll be able to ask anybody and they'll give me an answer. So I, I wonder if anybody, I mean, I'll tell you who I thought I might be. I thought I might be a blade of grass, wafting in the wind, hoping that nobody would sit on me. That's what I was hoping I would be. Now, Linda, have you got any ideas? Do we need a microphone? I suppose we better have. Catherine is going to offer to be our roving mic. Thank you, Catherine. Sorry to pick on you, Linda, but I know you usually have something good to say. <laughs> I think I might be a fish and I might be afraid that somebody might eat me. Oh, well, that's interesting. Fancy being a fish and afraid that somebody might gobble you up. Well, yeah, but that's an interesting one. And can I just ask, Linda, did you get through the day without being gobbled up? Uh, no. <laughs> oh. oh, sorry about that, Linda, we really are. Has anybody else got something that they might like to say? Oh, come on, we've got somebody at the front. Who might you like to have been? A jellyfish. A jellyfish? Oh, well. Well, that little boy didn't have any jellyfishes in his basket, but I tell you something, I think if he had, people would have said, hmm, is that a stinging jellyfish? Hmm, I'm not going to eat you. So he might have got away with it, might he? Scott free. That's imagination for you. Wow. Now, Mike Mavis, come on, you're the barbecue man. What, what would you, who would you have been? Who would I have been? I think I would have been a boulder. A what? A boulder. A boulder? I thought you said a builder. No, a boulder. No, no, no. But knowing Mike's DIY skills, I know he would never make a builder. So it is a boulder. I'd like to be a rock that could be there for some people to sit on and be comfortable. Oh, what a, what a nice man. Would you also provide a cushion to go between the rock and the person's bottom? No. But anybody else got anything? Well, I think we can all enter into the spirit of that and imagine what it must have been like. And I think it would have been a wonderful occasion. It would have been very exciting. There would have been a change of mood. People would have been thinking, am I going to have to go hungry for the rest of the day? Who's going to feed me? My tummy's rumbling. What on earth am I going to do for food? And I've got five children here, all wanting something to eat. And as the day went on, they would have realised, wouldn't they? Just what a memorable occasion that was. Because it all ended up 
with full tummies. People say in Newport, don't they? Full bellies. I was brought up in Yorkshire, so I know better. Full tummies. And so, yeah, they would have all seen something wonderful really happen. Now, according to my script, we're going to see, we're going to listen to a song. And I, did, I had not seen this song until Jill came round to our house just over a week ago. And we looked at some video clips. No, it was last Wednesday, wasn't it, I think, yeah. And we looked at some video clips. I think this is really lovely. And guess what it's called? It's called Five Loaves. And how many fishes? Two. Well done. Somebody's been listening. Thank you. Five loaves and two fishes. So, Simon, can we have that piece of music? Thank you. Sure. 
Did any of you see children in need? A few weary people did, I think. Uh, yes, yeah, some people saw it. Did any of you see a bit of that uh, children in need? The drumathon. Yeah, I saw the drumathon. I was quite um, enthralled by it. I couldn't stop watching it. Um, you know, the, the, the weatherman, Owen Wynne Davis Evans? Owen Wynne Evans, who drummed himself. I think out of all his energy for 24 hours. And I thought it was just amazing. I like the bit where all those drummers got together and beat, beat their drums to the BBC News theme. I thought that was really phenomenal. And um, I, I, he was interviewed quite a lot after that, was Owen Wynne Evans. And uh, he said, um, quite simply, it's the small amount given by ordinary people that have turned into this huge sum. The five pounds and the ten pounds that ordinary people gave. But we in here are not ordinary people. We are God's people. And that makes us very, very special. So what a small amounts can we give? Perhaps a little more time. Perhaps some fresh ideas, much-needed prayers, all-important encouragement, volunteering to join a rotor, perhaps even some extra money. Whatever you give, I can promise you that God will use it to build his kingdom here in this part of Newport. And that from this building will shine out Christ's light into the community. Showing the community that God is with them in all they do. So, I'm going to ask you a very personal question. What are your five loaves and two fishes? Now you've got beautifully created slips that were given to you when you came in and there's a little space for you to write your name if you want to be identified and perhaps to write something that you might want to do extra it doesn't it doesn't have to be anything big it can be something very small but in giving something small you know that just like those selection boxes that Christine talked about, one will become 161. And so, is there anything extra that you can do for God in this place that will grow into something big for his kingdom? And Jill is going to play a little background music just for a minute, and then on the way out, if you feel inclined, um, can you just pop your slips into a basket? There may be one out there, Elizabeth, um, when, when you go out. Okay, thank you, Jill. And if you're watching at home, which I hope you will be, then 
you can perhaps find a little piece of paper that you can write something down on, committing something small that you may wish to give to God for him to multiply for his work in this church and our community. I'm going to hand over to Jill now who is going to finish off the service with some important prayer and another hymn. Thank you, Jill. Um, so we're going to just make some prayers now of confession. That's when we say we are sorry. And some prayers for other people. That's when we put ourselves a little bit in the background and we put other people right at the front as we think about them and we bring all of them to God. And just remember that God hears what you're thinking. He hears what's in your heart just as much as he hears the words you say. And every single thought, every single word is so important to God. And he really loves to hear them. So let's pray. God, we're sorry when we haven't done the right thing. Sometimes that's on purpose. And sometimes we don't mean to do wrong. When we've said something unkind, we are sorry. When we've hurt someone's feelings, we are sorry. When we've left people out, we are sorry. When we've done something that you don't like, God, we are sorry. And Lord, sorry means that we want to try better next time. And you want to help us to do that because you forgive us. And that, Lord, is amazing. When Peter said three times that he didn't know you, you forgave him at least three times by giving him a very special place in your church. When he got it wrong, you gave him your love. And we know that when we get it wrong, you give us your love too. And there's lots of people who need us to pray for them now. So we're just going to remember some of them. And if you know anyone who you want to ask God to help, you can do that too. Jesus, many people were brought to you or came to you who weren't very well. Blind Bartimaeus, Jairus' daughter, the man who couldn't walk, whose friends made a hole in the roof. You made them feel better. You healed them. So we pray for everyone who isn't feeling very well today. Would you help them to feel better? Would you help the doctors, the nurses, and everyone who works in hospitals and clinics as they look after people who are in hospital? Lord, they are working so hard. Jesus, when you were born, there was nowhere for you to stay in Bethlehem. And we pray for all those people who don't have anywhere to stay today. Would you help those groups, those organizations who support them to find places for them out of the cold and the wet? Jesus, you were born into a country that was ruled by a strong army. We pray for people in countries around the world where there is fighting, where there is conflict, where people are hungry because crops don't grow, where there is famine. We pray for the persecuted church, where if someone is a Christian and follows you, they have to do it in secret because they are afraid of the government. Jesus, would you give strength 
to all those who are helping people all over the world who have to worship in secret. Lord, we know there are so many people and so many situations that need us to pray for them. And so we ask you, would you help us to pray every day for other people? Thank you, Jesus, for listening to all of our prayers, the ones we have heard in words and the ones we have brought in our hearts. Amen. Now, I believe, is there tea and coffee? Yes. There is. I just had to check that out before I promised you something I couldn't deliver. There is uh, tea and coffee, which is fab, because we haven't had that for so long, I can't remember when. Um, but we need to work up a bit of a, a thirst and a little bit of a hunger for the biscuits, because there's biscuits as well. So we're going to finish on a song of praise, remembering, Steve did sort of hint at this, that we are living in the light of God. You do, if you can, really do need to stand up for this one. You know, I think you do, actually. And maybe today we're not so used to people dancing and waving their arms about in church, but you know, in the time of Jesus and in the time of King David, they just did it. They just danced, they sang, they waved their arms about, they did whatever felt right as they were worshipping God. So you can do the same. Dancing is okay, I'd just like to point that out to you. Um, so we're going to sing, we are marching, oh, I can't remember the first line, Simon. We are marching in the light of God. And I'd like you to actually do a little bit of movement, if you can, work up a hunger, work up a thirst. And then please, if you can, stay with us for a cup of coffee and a cup of tea afterwards. Oh, Christine's got her hand up. Right. right, if you didn't quite catch that, when you get your tea and coffee from the front, please don't congregate in the foyer because obviously that's not a good idea at the moment. Bring your tea and coffee in, socialize, catch up with people, continue your praise, however you want to do it, in the church, in, the, in this, this sanctuary, that's the posh word for it, in the church. Um, because there's only a little space out there. And of course, we do appreciate that some people will feel that they need to get home and they won't be able to stay. Oh, look at this. Wow, I am impressed. I'll be more impressed when I see what you do with them. Okay, let's all stand up. Let's work up a thirst and an, um, an appetite for a cup of coffee, a cup of tea and a biscuit. As we sing, we are marching in the light of God. Because it's only God that can disciple us to work for him.
Church. We'll know that at the end of Messy Church, we all join together in the Messy Church Grace. So we're going to do that now. And I'm hoping Pauline will be watching this later, and I hope I do her justice, because Pauline normally leads this for us. But we're going to join in this, join in it with the loudest voice you can. There are actions, I think most of you will know them. Those of us who do, we'll do them in front of you anyway. I might get it wrong, but I should watch Steve or Catherine, they'll get it right, I probably won't. Okay, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Hey, well done. Thank you. And if when you get your tea and coffee, if you want to bring it back in here so there's not such a um, hubbub out there, that would be great. Thank you.